Let us revise the spinal cord and the spinal meninges. The spinal cord is the lower part of central nervous system and it occupies the upper two third of the vertebral canal, extends from upper border of atlas vertebra to the lower border of first lumbar vertebra in adults. This is the spinal cord with its meninges. The outermost covering is the dura mater. This is the dura. And next we have a very thin membrane that is arachnoid matter. You can see that very thin delicate membrane. There is not much space between dura and arachnoid. Now I have put the forcep in subdural space and you can see that the thin membrane which is arachnoid matter. This is arachnoid. Now after that there is a broad space that is called subarachnoid space. So here this is a subarachnoid space. It is filled with cerebrospinal fluid. I will cut the dura matter. Actually, I have passed the forcep in the subarachnoid space because dura and arachnoid matter are close to each other and the space between them is too small. I am cutting the dura and arachnoid together. So here I can show the arachnoid matter which is closely related to dura. They are so close that it is hard to separate them here. This is, this is arachnoid matter. You can see how thin it is. And that exposes the anterior surface of the spinal cord. This is the anterior surface of spinal cord and these are the anterior roots of the spinal nerve. These are motor in function and they also carry autonomic fibers in the thoracic region. There is a fissure here called anterior median fissure which is occupied by a glistening band called linea splendens. You can see that a silvery band in the anterior median fissure that is called linea splendens and it is a modification of pia matter. And if you see here, this is the cut end of the spinal cord can see the anterior surface is flat and the posterior surface is a bit bulged or convex backward. This helps us to identify the surface of the spinal cord. Anterior surface is flat and posterior surface is a bit bulged. And then we can see this fissure, anterior median fissure which is very deep. That also helps us to identify the anterior surface. Then the linea splendens helps us to identify the anterior surface. As we move down to the spinal cord, the lower end of spinal cord is conical. Somewhere here we get the lower conical end of spinal cord and that is called conus medullaris. Now I am showing you the posterior surface of the spinal cord. I will show you the posterior roots of spinal cord here. These are the posterior roots of spinal nerves. They are sensory in function. Here we have the lower conical end of spinal cord. This is called conus medullaris. This is the 
this is the conus medullaris and the pyometer covering the conus medullaris hangs down like a tail and that part is called phylum terminal so this is the phylum terminal which hangs down from the conus medullaris and surrounding phylum terminal here we have a bunch of nerves collectively called coda equina since they resemble the tail of a horse it's the coda equina it is made up of lumbar sacral and coccygeal spinal nerves 